All right. Uh, we want to continue what we started last uh, week, the requirements to eternal life, the requirements to heaven, which every Christian must know. Um, you know, it's been said that uh, uh, people have said uh, basic instructions before leaving earth. It's what uh, we need, but uh, we also uh, want to say here as we begin that uh, when we look at uh, our scriptures, uh, I don't know if anyone has uh, observed, but there is nothing like Bible in the Holy Scriptures, and uh, it's something that maybe I've wanted uh, to use for a, a quiz, but uh, maybe that would be sometime, but yeah, uh, the Holy Bible, as we know it, we need to actually say Holy Scripture, but there is nothing like Bible in the world, even though people have used the acronym, be a basic instruction before leaving earth as the, but, uh, the original uh, word, which is still the same, is Scriptures, so it's not uh, Bible, but it's Scriptures, and um, we can search and find and see if we can find anything like that. But anyway, as we said last time, we had some uh, list of uh, basic instructions that uh, is required, uh, which is, uh, well, in this case, we would say that uh, they are very necessary, they are required. So uh, it is something that uh, we need to really uh, take seriously and not to just consider uh, that, oh, it's you, are, you just need to be a Christian, and that's enough. But God says we need to really uh, have follow his instructions and read it. And uh, uh, so to begin, let us uh, read All right, let's uh, please read the book of Joshua chapter 1 and uh, we'll get the instructions of what God uh, gave uh, in order to reach the first scripture written this morning is taken from the book of Joshua chapter 1. Let's start from... Verses 6 to 9, please. The book of Joshua chapter 1, reading from verses 6. Be strong and of good courage. For to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper whatsoever you do. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, but then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. The last verse, which is verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. 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 All right. So as we continue with requirements to eternal life, eternal life also, which is uh, heaven. And uh, we see uh, this instruction and I think uh, we should also remember that when this commandment was being given to uh, the commander Joshua, he had been a a commander for at least 40 years. So he knew everything that 
uh, the Lord had done for Israel as they left uh, Egypt and as they journeyed through the wilderness. And so uh, it's sometimes somebody will say that, well, I already know the, uh, you know, uh, the scriptures. I already know it. I've already read it. I've read God's word, so it, it's enough. But here is someone who had seen all the miracles, who has uh, seen everything, and yet God is reminding him or commanding him that in order for him to be successful, he has to be strong in God's word. He has to also make a determination that he's going to follow what God's word has said. He's not going to, uh, you know, just relax. He's, he's proved God 40 years, and yet God is saying that only be thou strong and very courageous, and that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. So you can see that Moses had already groomed him, but yet God is still telling him that you have to, but most especially, he's telling him that, no, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper with silver uh, thou goest. So we see here that there's a requirement. God knew and God is reminding him. So if we repeat God's word, if we repeat it a hundred times, we haven't done anything at all because we know what God wants us to do and we know our hearts that we are always going to uh, limit it or do less. And so uh, the instruction applies to us. And so he says, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, for thou shalt meditate therein day and night. And sometimes we say, oh, well, I don't need to. But here is an instruction that he has to meditate day and night, and that, uh, that thou mayest you know, observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt uh, have good success. So we can see here that uh, these are requirements for every Christian. And so if God is saying it uh, to Joshua, who was already you know, a commander 40 years, then it is uh, important for all. So last time we stopped at number nine in the list of requirements that we listed. So number 10 uh, is saying that we need to begin the day with thanksgiving and prayer for the definite needs of the present day. We need to stop in the midst of our busy day for thanksgiving and prayer. Also, we need to close the day with thanksgiving and prayer. So as we all know, when we say that we need to begin the day with thanksgiving, it is uh, according to uh, the will of God because we have to cover ourselves under the precious blood, under the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to have that every day first with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a new day. Thank you for what you did for me in the past day, in the past week, and all of that. And now I am beginning a new day. And so I need your power. I need your presence. I need your Holy Spirit uh, to guide me so that I will be successful. And so that is what we need. And cover me with the blood, my family, and let your holy angels to surround me in the same way that they surrounded Elisha, Prophet Elisha, and help me so that as I go forth, I will have success and favor and victory throughout the day. And so when we have done that, then uh, that is what we do. And then uh, we need to stop in the midst of the day. So the uh, this is how sometimes we all know uh, you know, in my case, my lunch doesn't start early, but uh, many people, uh, their lunch begins at 11.15, sometimes 11.30, and you see everybody gathering by the microwave. They want to warm their food because they are getting ready. So here we see that uh, if we are, dealing spirit, uh, we are dealing with God in uh, our daily uh, lifestyle, uh, we need to always pause. That's why it says, since people stop, to eat their lunch, 
you know, then we also need to stop in the midst of the busy day uh, to reflect and say, thank you, Lord, I'm still uh, looking forward to your blessings and I'm still, uh, we're rather, we are, I'm claiming uh, the blessings and the victory and uh, all that you've done uh, for me up to this moment and I know that the rest of the day will also be uh, blessed. So, and then uh, we need to close the day. Closing the day meaning when you uh, have uh, gotten back home, we have uh, reached your destination, then uh, also with thanksgiving and uh, prayer that our Lord thank you and uh, to so we know what the Lord uh, gave you know when he uh, sort of taught his uh, uh, apostles or followers and uh, it says in Matthew 6 9 to 13 uh, we have the model prayer and uh, we'll read that also and uh, Matthew 6, 9 to 13, please. The gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 6, reading from verse 9 to 13. Matthew, chapter 6, reading from verse 9. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, I will be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our daily debts, as we forgive our debts. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So when we see what the Lord is saying here, you know, we can see that when He began, He says, uh, you know, we, we are praying to God. So there are always, uh, we are always praying uh, in threes. And uh, first, when we pray, the Lord Jesus Christ was praying to his Father, the Almighty God, not to Mary, you know, uh, not to any entity, just the Father. And we know that when we are praying to the Heavenly Father, who is the source of life, we are doing so because of what the Lord Jesus Christ uh, commanded. He, we, he gave us a model prayer to pray to his Father. And so he says, our Father who is in heaven, you know, so he is not, uh, well, let's finish the thought before we, add. so he says, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So we know that he is giving honor, he is giving holiness back to uh, the Father. And so it is important we know that we always need to give this hallowed uh, uh, blessing to the Father uh, that it's proper. We know it in the secular life, those of us who have uh, dealt, uh, you know, with people in authority, especially uh, you go before a king or uh, you 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 have to you know say something wonderful to make the king feel that oh yes i'm the only one in the whole world and look at king uh, look at the uh, prophet daniel you know look at what he said to the king and so it's 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 a model for us we praise uh, you know the king he said oh king live forever you know look look at can you we, we don't use that. He is giving honor to the king. He said, king, live forever. So he's giving, that king is going to say, wow, if uh, Prophet Daniel wants me to live forever, then it's a blessing. So that's what we need to be uh, also saying to our Heavenly Father in this case, that hallowed be your name. You know, may your name be kept holy all the time, every time. And let us also be found, found worthy to always keep ourselves holy because if you are holy, then we also have to be holy. So we need to have this uh, in the in our mind, in our actions, in everything that we do, that uh, we cannot go to God uh, with impure hearts. You know, because if you go back to uh, what we, uh, okay, let's finish then. We'll go back to uh, Mark 11 and we'll read that, uh, but let's finish this thought so that we, 11, 22 to 25, because there's a, a condition there. So here the Lord is saying that 
hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. So we are, uh, we are making ourselves aware, we are reminding ourselves that, oh, Lord, let your kingdom come, let your rule, let your, your glory, everything about you, let it continue to be evident, let it, let it show, let it come. That's why we sing, you know, we pray for uh, the uh, Holy Spirit. And so when we are praying, we always pray to the Heavenly Father in the power of God's Holy Spirit, in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ, or in uh, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's why we pray. He has given us the model, and he says we should pray in his name. So if we are praying in his name, then he said, the Father will answer you, will respond to you, because you are praying, you are using my name. So in the case of us, uh, when we also have, a, uh, should I say, something that we need to do, and somebody say, oh, go tell them that I said, you know, once you give that person's name, it is, it is, it is agreed. It is already done for you. You don't need to uh, worry just like uh, also in some places. They say, oh, just go and tell the person that I said my name and my name, you know, so there's something in the name we all know. So God is telling us uh, something. 